Jesus' name. Amen. Fingers crossed this works. I just asked at the last minute, can I use the PowerPoint thing? And it didn't get tested. And the poor tech people go, thanks, Adam. Thanks again. Um, so just a reflection for you guys. And I, I always wonder when I've asked these questions when I uh, present in front of you guys, if I've asked this question before, and if I have, I apologize and appreciate your grace and forgiveness. If I have asked, but we've all forgotten, then it's just a good thing that God doesn't always make us remember everything and, and it's going to be new and fresh. But I want to ask you the question of when you're meeting people for the first time, you know, you go to a party of someone that you know and, and they're inviting all these other people you've never met or when you come to church and it's a bit daunting and, and someone new comes or you go to a new place and, and you're trying to build a rapport with someone, what is your approach do you have a checklist of questions that you kind of pre-prepare or you roll yourself through? Like, I don't know, you meet someone, you go, well, what do you like doing? That's always an easy one, isn't it? You know, find, find some common ground or, um, or what happy hobbies have you got? You know, if you find someone with similar hobbies, that's it. You don't stop talking. Just ask my daughter and her friend <laughs> who don't stop talking about podcasts or fandom. Or this one's a usually hit and miss because it depends on which team you barrack for? What sporting club do you like or do you barrack? Usually that wins or alienates, alienates people very quickly. I thought this would alienate me with this community, but no, you guys are very forgiving because if you know who I barrack for, I always get the, you're with them. But I will never say it publicly unless I have to. Or um, in the Lutheran church, which this community church is a part of, uh, Sometimes you'll go to a Lutheran function and you usually get, oh, so what's your last name? Schultz. That's a good, strong German last name. Yeah, having a last name, Morris, is always interesting. Because I remember one time um, uh, when I was in my early 20s, I was lucky enough to be in a ministry group, and I apologise if, again, I've shared this story, where we uh, went and did programs and, and music and a bit similar to think what Stephen's done in the past, where you go and you minister to uh, churches and Christian Life Weeks. Uh, we went to uh, Christian, uh, uh, two weeks of Christian Life Weeks. They all sort of put them on back to back. And so we visited six Christian Life Weeks over the space of two weeks. Man, to be 20 again and do like that and still recover. I just think about it now. I'm like, there's no way I would do that now. But in between the weeks, there were weekends. And so whichever community we found ourselves in, uh, the, the local church put on a, a, a lunch, and so we did a service there, and we were up, let's say, further north than here, which has got some good Lutheran stock. And so I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> we're, the, we're off, so that's what he's talking about, yeah, thank you, now, now, it's, now it's public, thank you. No, no, they weren't, <laughs> I wasn't meant to, I don't want the camera to hear that, but because um, this is where it gets interesting. The, what happened was um, we did a, a service in a nice old uh, traditional looking church brick and um, I got to say I hadn't uh, experienced a good traditional Lutheran lunch like you know some of the sandwiches were div div divine you know the, the, the carrot egg or those gherkin sandwiches which you know just have the secret herbs and spices in them classic and so you know after service as a team we're all there trying to mingle and um, you know I've got my name badge on so people know who I am. And I uh, had this wonderful old guy with his walking stick come up. It wasn't Ross because Ross was, you know, 20 then. <laughs> um, and so he's like, oh, what's your name? I said, Adam. He goes, what's your last name, Morris? And he's like, that's not German. <laughs> I'm like, no. So how do you feel? I went, I do. And we sort of left it at that. And that sort of stuck with me because I felt bad because I couldn't go. Actually, I should have been nice and said, actually, my, my mother was a Kerber and I've got this Traeger. And I could have done that. But because the poor guy couldn't connect with my last name, there wasn't a, a rapport and we sort of left it at that. And sometimes, you know, it's who you know, not what you know. There's this, if you, if you connect with people because of some sort of common ground, then you feel like, I can build relationship with them. And that's not a bad thing, to be honest. Like, we do this because we want to feel safe. We want to feel, who are my people? 
And so, you know, who is your sporting group? Or, you know, where do you feel like you have stuck with along your journey? Who are your people? Who are those of the same caliber that you connect with? It's almost tribal, isn't it? You know, when you find your tribe, you're like, this is where I belong. And we do this through sporting teams. We sometimes wear our branding, where you belong. People know where I belong. Mawson Lakes has made sure of that because most of my clothes now are just Mawson Lakes clothes. <laughs> or maybe you've got a, an online group that you connect with or a fishing group, a music group that you connect with, a running group, certain hobbies that you do. You know, you do this because you want to find who your people are and who your, 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 your purpose well, it's interesting because at Mawson Lakes, this is what our purpose is. This is where we value. And it says, we see that God is transforming us into a community of people without walls, where we welcome those seeking a spiritual home of grace and acceptance. We'll be one church with many rooms, connecting people with Jesus wherever we are. As we do so, we will. I won't worry about the rest of the values, but that's just the major value here at Mawson Lakes. So to us, it's important that no matter your journey, no matter the different backgrounds you have, whether you have a German name or a last name, those things are important because we gather as followers of Jesus. And connecting and belonging to that is really important. And what's been interesting is when I decided to um, speak on this text, I didn't realize that uh, six weeks ago, Pastor Stephen would share about Trinitarian connection and how we yearn for connection. Uh, he reminded us, you know, when the Wi-Fi sign is broken, and for those online, you experience that quite often, not often, but quite enough to feel disconnected, that when those moments of disconnection happen, we're like, oh, where do I fit? Where do I belong? Or uh, Stephen also reminded us of, Two years ago, I think it was, where the power lines up literally bent over and SA had a blackout for who knows how long. And that was daunting for a lot of us. No power, no phones, no nothing. We missed our connection. But then, um, the end of last month, we had Anna who came and shared a bit about uh, how people are yearning for meaningful connections. And she provided sort of these six elements to engage in these meaningful relationships through love, through authenticity, through vulnerability, to be respectful, to be non-judgment, and to be curious with curiosity with one another. And so for our reading this morning, I think we can seek further into this because I think the church, again, has this continued message of if this is our values, and if this is what we're talking about, who we are as church, that we are invited as people to have real life and real meaning. Uh, I forgot to mention, too, that uh, what was really interesting in Stephen's um, message with us was this desire for whole, uh, connectedness, where the World, World Health Organize, Organization has declared loneliness a global health concern. When Stephen shared that, I went, wow, people are so lonely. What does the church have to say about that? How can we share that with one another? Um, again, Stephen highlighted, and I have to too, that the, the, the um, impact of loneliness on mortality is so great that it's the equivalent of someone smoking 15 cigarettes per day. And a lot of our young people are like, what? what cigarettes? Vape, I'm sorry if you want to use those. But isn't that just unbelievable? Loneliness affects people that much. It's like the equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes per day. That's how anxious, how wound up, how stressed, how much connectedness is important to us. And so we have this letter from Paul from... Um, uh, in Colossians that we heard, and, and Paul writes a lot in the New Testament to his church who are still new, still trying to work out what this means about how do we live with one another? Because you've got to think about it. The Jews were no longer just the people he hearing about Jesus. 
this message was going out throughout the Roman Empire. And so there was these new people deciding to follow Jesus. And they're like, how do we do this? Because we have different backgrounds. We come from different religious beliefs. We've come from different aspects of life. Uh, Paul, do you got anything you could tell us about that? Because we're really struggling with that. And so when Paul was writing to the... uh, to this church, he was in prison. So he had a bit of time on his hands to to write to this church. And so they were struggling because, as I mentioned, that some of them were Roman people who were worshipping Zeus and now decided that's not who they want to worship. It's Jesus. And so also the Jews were struggling because they had an understanding of, actually, we follow the Torah and we follow the law and this is what we were told and so you had this law-based group and this different religious group coming together to go well what does it mean to follow Jesus and so I encourage you to go back and and if you want to through your devotion particularly um first Thessalonians talks more about that but so what was happening is they were asked then how do we get along with each other when we've got differences and Paul in his goodness writes this about this practice of living with one another through clothing yourself. In verse 12, it says, Therefore, a God's chosen people, what we heard, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. I just love this idea of perfect unity because, again, Ross spoke last week that Christ brings us unified to one another. And so when we see this, Paul is reminding us to be convicted that our faith comes from Christ. And because of that, then we need to clothe ourselves with these qualities. It's really interesting this idea of clothing yourself because you're putting on these characteristics. It's a decision. Paul wasn't unintentionally saying just clothe yourself. He's like, make sure you put these on. Like when you came to church this morning, did some of you decide uh, maybe what I should wear or, you know, I I know what I have to wear so people can recognise me where I belong. But, you know, imagine if I just rocked up, Ugg boots, trackies, my favourite hoodie and a dressing gown. How would that fly with you guys? The giggles makes me a little unsure if you'd be like, yeah, yeah, we would find it funny or, yeah, don't. (laughs) Or when you go to your workplace, you clothe yourselves in those uh, clothes of saying, well, this is maybe my position, this is maybe, you know, what I represent. You know, some say you... Uh, clothe yourself in the, you, you wear the clothes for the job you want. So we unintentionally put on these clothes to say, you know, I want to clothe myself in a way that shows I respect my workplace, I respect the people, I respect the things who I am. I've got to say, it's always funny um, when I leave here and I've got to fill up with petrol, grab lunch on the way home and you walk into the shops and people are like, they're reading you and you forget, you feel like you're wearing a name badge. You're representing, that's who you are. And this is what we're trying to get into when we clothe ourselves. Because Paul's reminding ourselves to dress with those characteristics of Christ. And then to show and act to each other this practice. And what I love what Paul's trying to say here is, we get to practice with one another first. Oh, that's good. I have to practice compassion and kindness and humility with the people in this room. <sighs> no. Because we can forgive one another and burden ourselves with one another and encourage one another through that. But we don't have to do it alone because this is what Jesus clothed himself himself with too. And so to clothe ourselves is this invitation to be Christ-like. And we also know that Christ didn't just say it. He did it. And we see this because he through his life, came to us. He 
decided that he would come and share what it looks like through coming into our time, through being present with the people that he served and healed and taught. But he didn't just say it, he practiced it. And we know that through his sacrifice on the cross. And so these meaningful relationships we seek about, seek of, we can see that through Jesus. Because Jesus entered outside of heaven, or his time, to come and sit in our time. You know, he made time to be in our time to be with us. And then when he made time, he gave that time to his disciples. He healed people. He was with people. And he was present with them because he forgave them and restored them. And then he taught us how to practice compassion and kindness because he was. He was gentle and patient with those that persecuted him. And so Jesus showed us how meaningful relationships, how we are supposed to clothe and practice with one another, looks and how these clothes are meant to be worn. And so the invitation here, I'd like us to consider at Morrison Lakes, is, well, if we say at the start that was a value... And that, that there's this invitation for us to seek a realness of relationship. To build one another out. How do we do that with each other? Not just through our Sunday gatherings, but through doing life with one another. I reckon it's a little bit harder. Because if I see that Jesus was, you know, he made time and he was present. And it was a practice. I reckon making time is sometimes the hardest thing to do. Do you have time for those in your life that God's inviting you to practice kindness with? I know I'm a bit of a hypocrite too because uh, split between two communities, I sometimes find it's hard to balance both. But when I'm with these the, the communities that God's invited me into, I make sure I'm present. And so are we present with one another? And then when I stuff up or I talk too long or when, I don't know, uh, not feeling it or struggling, that you guys get to practice forgiveness and grace to me and I pray the same to you. That we practice these virtues that Jesus and Paul has asked us to do. And so that's why I want to encourage us as we continue this idea of doing this house church on the first Sunday of the month. It's, it's foreign to most people that have grown up in the church to say, well, one Sunday we're doing what? Are you sure about this, Adam? We know you're not a proper pastor yet, but, you know, we're giving you a little bit of grace, but what does that look like? Well, part of that is not just having a, a Sunday gathering here and doing our hour. I try and make sure we stick to the hour and then have fellowship and go home. But to invite into one another's homes and start doing life, to be present, to make time and to pr practice with one another hospitality, practice humility because maybe your house isn't up to the standard that you feel comfortable with or that, you know, you wake up badly and people are coming to your house and you're not feeling much compassion. Or you're going to someone's house and you're like, I'm nervous about this. What's this involved in? This is what we're trying to achieve is having a real authentic partnership here at Mawson Lakes. There are other ways too you can build realness. And some other ways is life transformation groups. You may not be familiar with that, but maybe... Going to someone's house is daunting, but maybe if there were three or two other people that you want to build relationship with, 
is an opportunity. Maybe you need to go, there are two people I really just love how they are walking in their faith and I want to grow and be accountable to them. Invite to other people and you meet over coffee and you go through scriptures and you talk about it. Or for those with families, I've been doing this since Gwen was two. My Gwen. <laughs> that, that would have been awkward. Not, yeah, my Gwen. Um, two, sharing the faith five as a family. You know, sharing what's been your highs and lows. What's, what's God inviting you into? Let's read some Bible and talk about that. Let's pray about the thing with our highs and lows, and you guys are familiar with this. And how is that connecting with what God's saying? And then to bless one another. And it doesn't just have to be families. Imagine if you're doing this with your opportunities to catch up with in your Bible study, to bless one another. Because the value here in our value six is we want a community that's connecting through our small groups, that's knitting us together. And so this is what our drive is for connecting more in person, not just outside of worship, but really building into opportunities. And that's why online churches, and that's why we're trying to do small groups. There have been other small groups happening be beforehand, and, and you know there are always opportunities on a Friday night to join along with Ross and Gwen through that. But the last thing I just want to leave you with is don't just allow it to be just empty words and promises. Don't just allow it to be this, yeah, I kind of get what you're saying, Adam. Yeah, and then next week we'll roll around again. I want to encourage you just to pick two people that, or pray for two people, uh, and they can be part of this community, they can be semi-connected to this community, but there are people that you want to make time for, that you know you need to be present with, who may get you to practice those virtues of humility and kindness and patience. Because if we do that, each one of us, we are building upon more connection to people knowing who Mawson Lakes is, to know who Jesus is, to really build into what we're on about, not just on a Sunday, but as a church in this community. And so I ask you to prayerfully consider that. Um, and if you have more questions about, well, uh, I didn't make the house church online last Sunday, but I could this week, what you got? Then please see me. Or if you really like, want to be practicing these virtues of having and hosting, please consider that too. But let's just pray. God, we thank you again just for the encouragement of Paul. And sometimes when we come together, we, we, we bring all our, uh, maybe our baggage or differences of how we think church is. I thank you, though, that when we gather, that we are unified through you, Jesus. And that we can clothe ourselves. That we can clothe ourselves with these, these virtues that you just want us to show that we can learn to be gentle with each other and bear with each other, other, other and forgive one another. And so I ask, Lord, that you allow that to be evident in us through those that you may place on a heart that you want us to connect with that may not be here. Or there are people here that we've always wanted to get to know and keep building those uh, relationships with just so we can have real meaningful relationship and so we just pray for this in Jesus name Amen